thank the organizers, and I want to thank the AMG 557 study team for giving me the opportunity to present the results to you today. Um, I'm presenting the results of the first in human study of AMG 557, which is an anti B7RP1 antibody that we tested in subjects with lupus. The authors and disclosures are listed on this slide. Uh, the authors on the left-hand side are Amgen employees and shareholders. The authors listed on the right-hand side participated as investigators in this trial. AMG 557 is also being developed in partnership with AstraZeneca Metamune and Takeda in different regions of the world. AMG 557 is a fully human IgG2 antibody that specifically binds B7RP1 with picomolar affinity. It does not bind to related B7 family members, and there's no evidence of depletion or signaling through B7RP1. It inhibits T cell activation and proliferation in vitro by binding to ICOS, the inducible co-stimulatory molecule expressed by T cells. B7RP1 is the sole ligand for ICOS. It is also known as ICOS ligand. Um, and B7RP1 in humans has a weak affinity for human CD28 and human CTLA4, although the mechanistic consequences of those interactions are not known because um, it's not found in mice. So many of you are familiar with this type of cartoon. Um, activated T cells upregulate ICOS, which is shown as in the uh, blue ellipse here. It binds to B7RP1 expressed constitutively by antigen presenting cells. And the cytokine environment surrounding that interaction dictates the fate decision of the T cell to differentiate into a T follicular helper cell, a TH1 to TH17, or T regulatory cell. T follicular helper cells through ICOS B7RP1 interactions, uh, CXCR5, CD4040 ligand, um, and IL-21 help provide the signals to B cells to form a germinal center and also to maintain a germinal center. So ICOS B7RP1 interactions are critical for both the formation and the maintenance of the germinal center. And the germinal center reaction is where the B cells undergo class switch recombination and affinity maturation to produce high affinity antibodies, which are shown here, as the B cells differentiate into short and long-lived plasmoblasts and plasma cells and memory B cells. ICOS B7RP1 interactions are also important um, in the development of T cell memory, which is shown down here, um, in that ICOS null patients have a reduction in both central and effector memory T cells. So the role of ICOS B7RP1 in T follicular helper cell development, humoral immunity, and TH17 expansion make it a rational target for treating human autoimmune disease. ICOS B7RP1 B7RP1 blockade reduces the development of disease in a mouse model of lupus. The NZBWF1 is shown on the top here. We show a reduction at the highest dose of 1B7V2, which is the mouse surrogate anti-B7RP1. Highest dose leads to a reduction in anti-double-stranded DNA, pro prolonged survival, shown here, and a decreased incidence of proteinuria. Other mouse models of autoimmunity, um, ICOS B7RP1, either blockade through using an uh, antibody binding one of these, or a genetic mutation of ICOS or B7RP1 uh, ameliorates development of these mouse models of autoimmunity. Also in mice, we've established a relationship between the dose of the mouse surrogate, the degree of target occupancy, that is the amount bound to B cells, and inhibition of a neoantidin challenge. And in this case, we've used keyhole limpet hemocyanin. ICOS in lupus patients, ICOS is expressed at higher levels on lupus patients, um, both CD4 and CD8 positive T cells. There are two studies shown here. Um, there are actually two posters that I just looked at which show the same thing. Um, so it's nice that this finding continues. Um, and uh, also in the nephritic kidney, if you stain for ICOS and CD19, the ICOS positive T cells co-localize with the CD19 positive B cells. So the single ascending dose study of AMG557 has been completed. It was randomized, double-blind, and placebo-controlled. There are six subcutaneous dose levels tested from 1.8 milligrams to 210 milligrams sub-Q, and one intravenous dose level at 18 milligrams IV. In the three highest subcutaneous dose cohorts, we used KLH to test the, test the capacity of AMG557 to block development of the neoantigen challenge. The primary objective was to assess safety and tolerability, the secondary objective was to characterize single-dose pharmacokinetics, and exploratory objectives included biomarkers, including assessment of target occupancy on circulating B cells, lymphocyte subset distribution, the anti-KLH anti antibodies in those subject immunized with KLH, serum chemokines including IP10, and gene expression including the interferon signature. Another exploratory endpoint was the disease activity, which we measured by BILAG, although this was a mild, stable population. Uh, this is shown here. Most subjects in this study were female. Most subjects were white or Caucasian. 
Uh, the mean age was 48 and 44 in the placebo and the dose group. Most subjects had a positive ANA, and a smaller percentage of subjects were double-stranded DNA positive or had low complement levels. The safety summary is shown on this slide. AMG 507 was generally well tolerated. There were no deaths or withdrawals due to ad adverse events. There are five serious adverse events that we found were both in the placebo group after we unblinded the study. Um, AMG 507 demonstrated nonlinear pharmacokinetics, which is to be expected for a molecule binding a cell surface protein. Four out of 56 subjects tested positive for binding AMG 557 antibodies. Two of these were in the 557 group and two were in the placebo group. All of them were, were knocked down by addition of exogenous AMG 557. Um, then none of the subjects tested positive for neutralizing antibodies. The target occupancy was measured by flow cytometry. In this assay, utilized two antibodies that also bound B7RP1. One that competed for B7RP1, uh, as shown here, um, binding free target, fluorescently labeled, and a second antibody and a second tube that bound a uh, total target, so a non-competing antibody. The target occupancy was then calculated as 1 minus the ratio of free over total times 100, and each subject's data was normalized to their own baseline, and then subjects were grouped by dose level. The target occupancy data is shown here, where the placebos are in the, the black square, and with increasing doses, you see an increased amount of occupancy that reaches a maximal occupancy in the 140 milligram subcutaneous dose with a longer duration of occupancy in the 210 group. O target occupancy is dose related and is reversible, returning to baseline as we get towards the end of study. So, in conclusion, single dose administration of AMG 557 up to 210 milligrams sub Q and 18 milligrams IV demonstrated an acceptable safety profile with no neutralizing antibodies. AMG 557 demonstrated nonlinear PK properties as expected for a therapeutic targeting cell surface receptor. Target occupancy was dose-related and reversible with reaching maximal levels in the 140 group with a longer duration of occupancy in the 210 group. We did not observe inhibition of the anti-KLH response or select lupus-related disease biomarkers, although longer duration of AMG 557 exposure may be required to detect these biologic effects. I do have the KLH slide if somebody's interested, they can, or if there's time. Um, there were no changes to disease activity as expected for subjects with mild stable disease. And we believe that the safety, pharmacokinetic properties, and target occupancy data support further evaluation of AMG 557 as a therapeutic for lupus.